everybody, and welcome back to Higher Density Living. You are joined here with Jason Rigby and Alexander McKaig. Um, thanks to our sponsors. We're going to well, talk about Trump and Kamala. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How much significance that has in the world today. Spiritually, it has zero. Wait, I want to be clear. They are not our sponsors. No, and they're um, service to self yeah. entities. But I will I will thank our sponsors, Quality Mazda and M.com. If you want to buy a dope-ass vehicle in the Colorado, New Mexico, and Texas area and have it shipped to you with a really easy educational buying experience. I still got chalk on my shoulder. QualityMazdaNM.com. Yep. Look right here. Long-time sponsor. And our second sponsor, Splashing. Tartle, T-A-R-T-L-E.co. If you don't want the man making money off of your data and you want to take it private, mm-hmm. you do that using Tartle. Free or to if use. you're a business oh, yeah. and you want to purchase data. If we have businesses that listen to this, I'd be shocked. But if we do, if you want to purchase data... Well, you can do that ethically by asking people for it and giving them money. T A R T L E dot C O. Okay. That's enough sponsor stuff. That's I love plugs. it. Can we talk about uh, Spinoza? The right way to live? Yeah. Can, can, Timeless can, wisdom for a fulfilling life? Can we talk about this, this Portuguese Jew who had absolutely phenomenal insights? 17th century Dutch philosopher? Of course. Yeah. I don't know how to pronounce his first name. I'm not Dutch. Baruch? 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 Yeah, Baruch? Spinoza. Yeah. What do you know about him? Uh, I know he was a lens grinder. That's cool. You know, in the, in that area of Europe at that time, like glass, mm-hmm. magnifying glasses, shit like that. What are the, oh, the looking up at the stars? Telescopes. Yeah, telescopes. Yeah, that was big. That's you know? probably Bosch and Loam. No, Bosch and Loam, did they get started off I don't. Lenses? I don't know how I old think they, they did because they do like contact lenses. They do contact yeah. lenses. But, they but make, I think they did lens because they started off that way. Yeah. I'm not correct. I know the and German then, lens manufacturer. Stavinsky or whatever, people will yell at it. Swarovski? Yeah. That's a, a lot of hunters use that one. Yeah. I have a Swarovski. I got a Swarovski and, scope on my yeah, gun. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. You just distracted me. What was I talking about? Uh, the 17th century Dutch philosopher Spinoza. <laughs> Spinoza. Bruce Spinoza. Uh, but no, it sounds like some Italian. He, I know he's Dutch, but it sounds like a, a really good Italian dish. Yeah, the son of a fruit merchant. Let me give you our, our favorite uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> appetizer. Amazing <laughs> Spinoza. Here's some Spinoza for you. <laughs> it's got to be kinda, something. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds like a uh, an ice cream. Yeah, dessert. and I like all of his portrait photos. Want some Spinoza because he's got the great curls, but you can tell he was wearing a hat. Yeah, he he was. He's like, oh, hold on. I know you're going to paint this of me. He, um, you and him have great hair. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you have Spinoza hair. Spinoza. So let's get into Spinoza's philosophy, and then maybe we can see some similarities. Yeah, well, let's the law let, of one. Let me hit this on the background first. Spinoza, in his past, um, you, you know, he's brought up a Jew. He didn't think that God didn't exist. He just thought that the way we define it mm-hmm. was not correct. That is, and correct. then to take it further, people really didn't like it. That is correct, <laughs> and to take it further. Spinoza vehemently felt that the historical record within the Bible was completely fraudulent and inaccurate. And that got him into a world of fucking hurt with everybody. Yes. So like this guy is a heretic. Yeah. How dare he challenge the Bible? Yes. Okay. Baby Jesus, uh, Lord and Savior said <laughs> shit happened at X time. That must be it. So throughout that, the course of it, you know, he had to continue his work. It was hard for him to get into specific social circles, especially philosophical ones. So he reclused himself into his own private works and continued to publish those throughout his life without mm-hmm. the support of universities or others because they just knew they wouldn't jive with what he was saying. Because universities, they're their own religion anyway. Oh, big time. Especially they're cults. Today. They're fucking cults. Yeah, yeah. You know? So and uh, if any universities want to tee up with me on that, Let's go all day. Yeah, I'll, break, I'll break it down for you. I'd be happy to do that. Well, they started off that way. Universities started off as uh, the- theological centers. Look at Oxford. Yeah, all of them. I think yeah. Harvard, Yale was all theology. Yeah. That's how it all started. Christ Church. Yeah, and then you had the puritanical teaching. That Don't get started there. Don't even get me going, man. So let's get into the human spirit. Yeah. He viewed it as a perpetual seeker yearning for meaning, purpose, and happiness. And we all want to live a fulfilling life. And so here's Spinoza's philosophy, kind of in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. He had three key tenets. Okay. Reason, common sense, and practicality. Okay. First of all, those are all great things. (laughs) Yeah. I could be friends with this guy. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. You know, to reason something says, I'm going to sit here, I'm going to observe it, Mm -hmm. and I'm going to understand it as it is. 
I'm going to find I'm going to find the pieces of wisdom within it, and I'm going to reason to how it works, how it flows, how it interacts with things. I'm going to sit there and mentally digest. Mm. Great thing to do. What's the mm. second tenet? The second one was common sense. Common sense. Don't be an idiot about shit. Mm-hmm. Is it dangerous? Don't do it. Yeah. Does it feel wrong? Don't pursue it. Mm-hmm. When you eat it, does it make you feel sick? Avoid it. It's that common simple. sense. And then practicality. And he uses practicality kind of more as like not minimalism, but not being attached to materialistic things. Yeah, be practical. I'm. I was born into this world. I'm going to use me. Alexander was born into this world. Do I need anything else? Mm-mm. The human body produced another human body, which is this fleshy tool vehicle that I'm in, going around doing things. It can operate on its own. I I don't need clothing. No, no. I don't honestly need shelter 24-7. You just need these temporary things. They're temporary. They're fleeting. So the practicality is I have everything that I need to evolve. Yeah, and he emphasized, and this was another big one, he emphasized living in harmony with nature. Okay, great. Imagine that. Well, first of all, if you have the tenets of uh, common sense, reason, and practicality, you're always going to land back on nature teaching you these things. Yes. And you can't live outside of the thing that gives you life, Mm -hmm. right? Otherwise, your life wouldn't exist. That would be unreasonable. Isn't it funny how we try to separate ourselves from that? All the time. Yeah, separating ourselves from nature, separating ourselves from any any form of unity. Mm -hmm. We want to separate ourselves. Just shut it right down. You know, there's nothing wrong with us as human beings measuring things. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with us categorizing things. It helps us understand. But as a whole, in the most macro sense, you must remember that it's completely unified. It's a one principle. It's a one, yeah. you separate it categorically for measurement to help you understand. Yes, yeah. But at its core, it's one. It's all one. That's what the law of one is. It's a That's law called the law of one. Yeah, it's not. It's there's nothing. It, there's nothing in and above that's greater than the law of one. Yeah, it, it's at the the top of the sphere, if you want to. Call so it. I'm a human being. Mm-hmm. You're a human being. You're one thing, right? Mm-hmm. I am one thing. Now us here together. We are creating one thing. There's a hyper oneness of you and I putting this show together. Over do, one plus one equals one. <laughs> one plus one equals one. You know what I mean? Yeah. With the oneness. Yeah. It's just, even if you divide it, something out into its constituent parts, they're still parts of the whole, mm-hmm. but they're also their own independent things, which are still one. Do you feel like, um, cause this is something Espinosa and his masterpiece ethics talked about. And he talked about happiness is not the reward for virtue, but virtue itself. Happiness is not the reward for virtue, but virtue itself. And I I think when I I think of the word virtue, and I think what he's referencing is to everybody's being hedonistic. I see. You know, to the point of it's it's like I'm going to be hedonistic. And and do do what thou wilt. You know, Alistair Crowley was that, you know, for the extent of the law, which there's some practicality. There's some understanding in that. And I want to do a whole show on Alistair Crowley. Okay. Because there's as below, as above, so below type yeah. of stuff, you know. And that's balance. But virtue in and of itself, when we look at that word, there's so much religious dogma tied to it. Yes. Virtue to me, I, another word would be like pureness. Like, like unity and purity is a virtue. Like... You know, showing love to someone is virtuous. Okay. Okay. Not okay. not happiness. Okay, but you had to recognize is different. But you had to recognize that you wanted to go show that thing. Yeah. You have to define those virtues for yourself. Now, say for instance, Alexander had no virtues. Mm-hmm. What am I left with? Tons of material things around me to amass. Mm-hmm. But we've seen this in life. Material things don't bring you happiness. No. This shit's temporary. True happiness comes from the virtue. It's well, the point of yes. where you want to be and what you find value in. You have to establish your personal value system first. To even understand what happiness is, which means you have to do an internal searching rather than an external one being hedonistic, finding all these other material things, you know, the basal animalistic instincts, having those fulfilled is not what you're looking for at their higher values. Yes. And that's what he talks about prioritizing the essential needs that bring out the best in you. What, what is an essential need for you? Um, uh, creativity, stimulation, working is essential need. Like I, I would not not want to work. No, I don't no, want to no. just have unlimited money where I'm just hanging out doing nothing. Retirement sounds gross to me. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I need something. Even if I was like philanthropy or something, you know, it would need to be. I would need to have a, an active purpose. Mm-hmm. I think that's a necessity where I'm active. 
not not you know i don't want to just i enjoy taking vacations i enjoy sitting at the beach yeah but i wouldn't want that to be my end all goal for the day no mine's motion yeah yeah yeah. that's yeah, what yeah. mine I is like motion, yeah. yeah i like motion yeah you're busy you're i mean motion like you're 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 even physically active correct like moving i'm mentally from physical, place to place to yeah place. i'm mentally physically and spiritually active yeah you you're you're like to move i do like that yeah like like uh so i, I get that that makes sense so prioritizing the institution needs that bring out the best in you. And then living well is about – he talks about it's very important to find balance. And he's going to define balance. Well, he's looking at nature all the time, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if I just took a tree and stuck it on the ground, it's, it's going to fall over. It has no balance. It has no support, right? It needs to be counterbalanced with a root system. Simple. Simple. Yeah. I yeah. And, and what are roots? Yeah. What are roots? <laughs> or like think about balance and take it simpler. Eating? But it's so funny is like we look at roots as not really being a part of the tree. It's the most important part of the tree. It's not visible. Yeah, because it's not. That's I'm, the part that's receiving. I was having soil issues the on, micro, the, on the farm. Yeah. And so, you know, I had to look to the roots. What is happening here? Mm -hmm. That's where the answers are. Yes. that's where The, the top is just a reflection of what's underneath. Yeah, the as below. And that's where, you know, Carl Jung talks about doing the shadow work is getting into that as below, accepting who you are. Um, will create fruits automatically to as above. I like that. You know, that balancing. You just see the fruit heads on my amaranth? Mm -hmm. I got to send you a picture. Awesome cones. They're amazing. So beautiful. But if you talk about balance, even with with eating, diet, mm -hmm. all right? What happens if you don't eat a balanced diet? We all know this. Yeah. The, the, I mean. It's a stupid question because we know the answer and be Socratic about it. You become sick. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. So what happens if your thoughts are out of balance? You become mentally sick. And then what happens if the thoughts are out of balance, which lead to actions? Your actions are out of balance. Yes. So now yes. you have this vicious, damaging cycle. The balance is required. <laughs> it is a requirement. It must be there. Yeah. And, and, and Spinoza. Any, 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 Spinoza. Any, Spinoza. <laughs> anything that's out of balance, what's going to happen? There's an equilibrium. Yeah. If it's out of balance, it's just going to fall. And it, it's so easy to visually see that. Um, when you have a tire out of balance, we put weights on tires and all those things. <laughs> but it, it, if anybody's ever had an Alaba out of balance tire, Alabama tire, an Alabama tire, <laughs> no, but you know what happens when you go faster? Yeah, and vibrations become severe. That's what's happening. And in if the they're world. so severe for so long, the yeah. bolts start flying off and shit. So I don't want to get into this level, but what if we're out of balance and then we go faster through technology? Come on. <laughs> What do you think? <laughs> yeah, it's going to be bad. So, what do you um, mean, Skynet's coming? <laughs> finding balance and prioritizing essential needs that bring the best in you. Number one, he says, is reason over tradition. And he urged us to think for ourselves, this free from prejudice and dogma. This is great. Questions, assumptions, seek evidence, form your own opinion based on reason. Very, very good. So, every day I'm reading the Bible because tradition tells me I need to do so. Mm -hmm. Okay. I need to say my prayers. I have to remind myself of what Genesis told me for how I'm here on this planet and how Jesus gave up his life for my sins. Okay? Tradition says I go to the table, I say the prayer, I bless the food, I do all these other things, go to bed, repeat the fucking cycle every single day. Mm -hmm. Have I read another book in the past couple of years? No, I haven't. Shit. Have I considered that maybe tradition may be inaccurate? Maybe it's not really beneficial. It's not serving me. Why do I feel still empty? Why is it I keep going for more prayers, mm -hmm. but my life is not materializing? Because you're putting it into this yes, false yes, god yes, that yes. tradition tells you to do, rather than saying, maybe I should, maybe I should weigh into myself a little bit more. Maybe I should go take that action. Maybe I should step away from the traditions of my family and step out into something that actually brings me true joy. Finding mm. other virtues other other than the ones that are predefined by the religion for me or what traditions define as my virtues. Yeah, I'm going to look this up. How I, annoyed would you be? Let me ask you this. I'm going to look up a quote. because Yeah, how, how annoyed would you be if in a traditional sense, um, how would I say this? Everybody in your family has gone to this school, so you're going to go. You track with me? Mm-hmm. Oh, but mom, I don't want to go. I don't want to go to the school. This is this doesn't align with me. Well, listen, your grandfather went, yeah, uh, your yeah, father went, yeah. your brother went, your older brother, your other older brother, your cousin Vinny went. You're gonna go. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I don't <laughs> want to go. Then you have retaliation. But the thing is, there's such a rub between tradition and that. Mm-hmm. Um, what was the other thing you said? I'm totally fucking lost. Uh, tradition and uh, dogmas. Prejudices, yeah. too. Yeah, so that, have, well, that turns into prejudice. Yeah, they, those things come together. And so you have this rub against what the human being actually needs. And you're giving up these these core values and virtues for the mm-hmm. traditions that other people want to impress on you and tell you this is appropriate for your life. Yeah, I want to read this quote. This is from St. Ignatius of Loyola. Ignatius is such a cool word. Saint, I know, Ignatius. Yeah, so he started the Jesuit movement yeah. and signed the Catholic Church. Why did this quote come to you? I don't know, but listen to this. It's, okay. it's, it lines up with this. I was reading Rene Descartes, and he brought this up the other day in his one of his philosophy books. It says, what seems to me white, I will believe black if the hierarchical church so defines. Oh, yeah, I remember this. Yeah. What seems to me white, I will believe black if the hierarchical church so defines. Right. Talk about the that, power of the church defining life. That's exactly right. But you see it in families. You see it in religion. You see all these other things. And Spinoza wants you to challenge that for your own well-being rather than having everybody else determine your life for you. Because that's unreasonable. Mm-hmm. It's unreasonable for people to tell you how to live. You're also smart enough. I don't care who the fuck you are. You're also smart enough to make your own opinion. <clears throat> And that opinion doesn't have to – it's dogma to think that an opinion has to stay fixed. No, it doesn't. You can change. It's going to – it's going to – every opinion is going to adapt. To if you were a if wild – If you're growing. Yeah, if you were wild ass, totally off the scale, um, like vegan, mm-hmm. it can change. It's cool. Yeah, it can change. You don't have to hold that character. Fine, that doesn't yeah. define you. Just go no. through the process of learning. I'm glad you're exploring. Yeah, I was listening to a, a guy the other day and he was talking Radical. about – This is really interesting – there's these people in India that believe that you should not harm anything. Right, Jainist. Yeah, and so they don't harm bugs or anything, and they only take, like, they don't even harm the plant from the food that they eat. That's correct. They so only they grab have food to take that the falls fruit. naturally. Yeah, yeah, falls naturally. Like, you have to take the fruit or almonds, like nuts or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like, if that lines with you and that's something you want to do, awesome. Great. That's great. You know, I mean, it, it's be the like, next Steve Jobs. He was a Janist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was go good. for it. So next was balance emotion with reason. I don't think there's a correlation between Jainism and Jobism, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> well, he must have been angry all the time. He must not be. He must not have ate good because it was he all was that, angry all the time. It was all that rye fungus he was yeah, tripping yeah. on, dude. It's all that LSD. At least his wife is doing lots of cool things with their money. Really? She's doing tons of philanthropy. Yeah, it's really That's cool. Wonderful. How nice. Emotions aren't good or bad. Nope. But understanding them is crucial. Spinoza believed that by understanding ourselves and our emotions, we become lovers of what is, accepting reality as it is. What are you going to do? Lovers of what is. Do you know what's- I like the word lovers of what is. Because the more you embrace reality. The more you love it. Yes. The yeah. more you can then understand and, it. And, there, and, that, and then that, that the word lovers is kind of like you know, uh, an erotic word, like in the sense of like lovers, like all they can't but help being around each other and knowing yeah. each other. And, and there's this excitement and this feeling. Like if you get into like the definition of lovers and then it's like get that way towards your emotions. Yeah. They're not bad. It's like lovers. Like understand your reality. Understand who you are. Understand get that going. excited about you. See what, see what jacks you up. See what gets yes. you sad. But – Understand those things. Reason with yes. your emotions. And reality is different for everyone. Of course it is. Your reality is totally different than my reality. Yeah. I, you live in a totally different world than I do. I absolutely do. Yeah. So, and accepting that, it, we, th- there's this whole bullshit of like everybody's Republican, everybody's Democrat, everybody's Catholic, oh. everybody's Protestant, oh. um, everybody's American, everybody's like, it's like, wh- wh- why do we need these? No one can put a label on anyone, there's no swatch. Of, no. of cohort of people. Everybody's super uniquely different. They're all different. Yeah. We may like certain things and have certain, you know, you like may, may like Mercedes. I may like BMW or vice versa. I thought whatever. I did until the tranny broke. Them. <laughs> I don't anymore. <laughs> That's funny. Next, focus on the present. Worrying about the future, dwelling on the past, robs us of the present moment. Spinoza advocate for living in the now, serving each experience fully. So okay, this Eck- he must have heard Eckhart Tolle. Yeah, this is like this is heretical too, <laughs> because the church says you've done sins, right? Yeah, you have to. Constantly. But all you must do going forward is pray and atone for those sins. Mm-hmm. So they keep you in the past and have you focus on your future death, mm-hmm. 
for where you're trying to go, but you're completely removed from the moment of just experiencing and living in the now. Does nature, you know, if I go outside and I look at a tree, I love trees. The, why they make so many good examples. If I go outside and I look at a tree, is the tree trying to be in the future? Nope. Is the tree looking at its past? Nope. Tree is being tree. I, and I want people to understand this. What you just said is so enlightening, and I think it's going to help a lot of people. If you're living in the past, you're living in guilt. If you're living in the future, you're living in fear. <laughs> yeah. So a religion that you've got your belief in, that you're betting your whole life on. A cult religion. Uh, would, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Is flooding you consistently with guilt and fear. That is not the stuff I that, want. That's not religion. No. And then think about how you're going to make choices. First of all, that's so out of whack. Yeah, it's, it's gross. I mean, now you're it out feels of, gross ugh, yeah. nasty. I'm going to shower after this episode. <laughs> I feel gr I feel fucking gross. That's crazy. Do people even listen to us? Yeah. Yeah, we have a lot of downloads. That's that's pretty cool. <laughs> this last uh, one we did, we got a lot. That's nice. Thank you. 36,000 or something like that. It's on YouTube. Are you, you shitting me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't even get anyone in my own household to download what I'm saying. <laughs> I know. I always, ask my, I always ask people closest to me, my family. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, did, did, they're like, no, I didn't. I'm like. Oh, do you listen to my podcast? Yeah. No, 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 no. Or I love when they look at me like, what do you do for work? I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I put ah. my whole life online. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know. I do not know. It's my fine. Instagram like has my whole life. <laughs> Just yeah. call me and ask me how I'm doing. That's all I want. <laughs> Why can't I get that? I'm the opposite. I'm like, please don't call me. <laughs> uh, next is uh, pursue virtue and happiness as one. Virtue and happiness. We talked about this a little bit. Virtue and happiness are intertwined by living ethically and in harmony with our true nature, with our true nature, which is nature. Mm -hmm. We're all one. That's oneness. We naturally experience joy and fulfillment. This is the problem that we face in current society. There is no joy and fulfillment. And he just gave you an answer for that. It Think and about that. 17th century or whatever century he was in. You have no fulfillment. I'm a marketing person. I need to feed you no fulfillment so you will purchase these items. Right. And find fulfillment do these things. from these things, which is totally temporary and will not last for you because yeah. you have no value system. Your virtues are fucked. Do you know what's a good fulfilling thing for me to be in line with nature? You know, I got chickens, mm -hmm. lots of them. Well, it's cool because when I have food scraps or like blueberries or watermelon and stuff like that, you know, or peppers. I got to walk out and I get to feed it to them. Mm -hmm. Then the chicken poops. <laughs> okay. And then that hot, you know, nitrate driven poop goes into the soil and that gets balanced out with all the other stuff that's over there. And then every 24 hours I get to collect an egg from that chicken mm -hmm. and I get to see what it was fed and how it earned its, its living and its life from the land. And then I get to enjoy that. It fulfills me in the morning mm -hmm. and I get to watch this full natural cycle occur. And then I cook, and then the scraps go back over to them. And then we just repeat. Peat and repeat. Yeah. It, it's really, really simple. It's not that difficult. No, but it, it's interesting. You can see do you it, give it Do you give them scraps? All the time. Yeah, I did, I did too. Do you have mice problems? Yes. Where the scraps are at? Yeah. Because yeah. they, I would, uh, they would. You know, certain chickens are really good mousers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Certain ones are, yeah. yeah. I had roosters are really good with that, but then mm -hmm. those are annoying. Mm -hmm. Next, embrace growth. Listen to this. No. This no, I want, to stay, I want to stay small. I don't want to I evolve. Love my, I love my labels. <laughs> <laughs> Learning and understanding are the highest human activities. Where did he, he got this okay. from? Where did he get this from? I don't know. I don't know. This guy this is channeled. This guy was channeled. hanging out with extraterrestrials or something. Listen, embracing growth, right? Right. What are the tenets for growth he just said? Say it again. Learning and understanding. Learning and understanding. His growth is not about your body. He it said, is not about the, your property. He said, are the hu highest human activities. Listen to me. I'm listening. Listen to me. It's not about your wallet. It's not about the stuff you own. Right. Okay. It's not about how big your house is. Yes. Knowledge. Yes. And wisdom. Yeah. Your evolution, your growth, the only important one you will find is in your fucking mind. Mm. That is it. That's it. That's it. Think about that, though. He's telling you right now, ignore all the other stuff. Yeah. He's saying, he's saying, uh, Knowledge, wisdom, which is learning and understanding. All right. First of all, I do not speak Portuguese or Dutch. Maybe a little Hebrew. Could you imagine having a beer with this guy? Oh, that'd be cool. And I bet you he gets yeah. shit-faced. Well, actually, not. He's probably pretty reasonable. Yeah, yeah. He, everything in moderation kind of So thing. he's like, give me a liter of yeah, beer. Yeah. 
They'd be a blast to drink with. Oh, it would be awesome. Imagine how back in time, like, all right, I, I get all dressed up so he's not like, who's this fucking dude well, we'd from have the to future? Wear the, thing. the big oh, neck collars and the yeah. fluffy stuff. The white. It's yeah. Hot outside. Hats with big buckles and shit. I never understood that. Yeah. And I'd be like, Spinoza, Spinoza. And then I'd be like, uh, beer, sit, he's, talk. Well, drink. a lot of these guys, you know, didn't make shitloads of money or weren't like rich or nothing. So he could probably go. He'd probably love to have you buy him a beer. And you know, here's what else I found interesting. People translate his works. Right. That's sketchy. First of all, where are those fucking people? How come they're not talking? Mm-hmm. You telling me they go through and read all of Spinoza's massive. Well, he did the same thing. What? I mean, he was probably getting channel material and then he just wrote it down. Billy Myers that way. He just writes shit down. People got to get jacked up about it. What, what did he call himself? Billy Meyer? The, uh, a herald. Yeah. Herald. Yeah. Not a prophet. Nothing. Just a herald. Yeah. But this is interesting. He says, a, a lifelong pursuit of knowledge and personal growth leads to freedom and self-realization. <sighs> How does self-realization lead to freedom? I have an answer. Because if you know what your virtues are, you know where you want to go, you know how to act accordingly in the balance of your mind from mm-hmm. making your decisions, you are free to think and act on your own accord. And not this homogenized, consumeristic. Look like this, do like yeah. this, read like this, be like this. All these industrial complexes, military, you know, food industrial, all these industrial complex telling you specifically, this is how you act. This is how you be a patriot, you love God, yeah. uh, be happy that the Pentagon exists. Uh, don't worry, we're stealing your data. Continue to buy more shit, take out more debt, and uh, don't think for yourself. Yeah, or on the other side. Oh, all take pe- all people from the past were bad. They all need to be destroyed. All mm-hmm. their art and and the libraries. Take that stretch down. Yeah. Uh, anybody that's white is horrific mm-hmm. and should you know be whipped. Um, the list goes on and on. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, it's stupid on both sides. It's like so dumb. There's no sides. One. If you're all one, there's no sides. But here's remember we talked about this with the balance. If you don't have balance in your mind, what are you going to yes. see? Yeah, sides. You're going gonna to see sides. Yeah. You're going to live in the sides. Yeah, you're going to you're going to you're, you know. you're like a leaning dead ass <laughs> tree. You know. So key takeaways from this, and then we'll be done. Mm-hmm. Living well is a journey, not a destination. It involves continuous. That's what we talked about: self reflection, growth, and striving. Great word, striving for balance. He used the word striving. Mm-hmm. Who is this dude? It's a great word. Striving. Yeah, because it deals specifically with evolution. Mm-hmm. It's a core tenet yes. of creation is to strive. Yeah, and this was before evolution, right? Seventeen hundreds. Oh, like this, these 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 elements of how he's. Yeah, I mean, he didn't yeah. he didn't take Charles Darwin. He wasn't shit. listening to Darwin. He's way before him. Yeah, so he wasn't taking Darwin stuff and then adapting it into philosophy. No, Darwin may have li- read some of his shit. He probably Darwin ripped his stuff probably right out of him. <laughs> mm, Spinoza's got some good stuff. Spinoza's philosophy offers timeless wisdom that can guide us towards a more meaningful and fulfilling life, and that's what people are looking for. You're not going to get it through. It, it, it's so funny. I was talking to somebody on the podcast the other day, a guest that we had, and we were talking about traveling well and being spiritual when you travel mm. and how most people are. And, and, and you've seen this too. You, you guys do really well, you and, you and your wife, but most people, they have to make a timeline. It's like more stressful than their work when they travel. You know people this way. I know people. Hold that, on. I'm that, just going to mute this. <laughs> yeah, there we go. If you can read lips, you know what I said. Don't tell the person I said that. <laughs> but there are some people that they get more stressed out because they have to do this and they have to do this and it's this time and it's this time. And there's no in the moment, there's no there's no enjoying Not in the moment. Just being there's no like, oh, let's take the side street and go down here. Oh, there's a there's a cool uh library or a cool pub or let's go in there. Or, what happens when you miss something on your predetermined yes, schedule? Yes. Fuck yeah. it. Traveling is such a mess anyway. Get rid of all the transactional nature. Don't be so strict with everything. Feel it. Be a part of the culture. Yes, you know? yeah. Uh, and there's always it, there's a, it's enjoy the journey. Enjoy the time at the enjoy the time at the. Uh, it's you cannot change the two hour layover. Where do you want to go? Or next? Four hour layover. You can't do it. It, yeah, it yeah. is. I mean, I'm going. In it a is weeks. what I'm it is. To Where are you going? Seattle. Oh yeah, you're going to Seattle. See That's my right. family. Yeah. Well, I'm flying into Seattle, and then we're going all around. Because uh, uh, Leah hasn't gone to Mount Rainier or the whole rainforest. I, I haven't been there either. Oh, it's amazing. Can you bring me back some fungus? Yes. So there's yeah. lots of fungus. I doubt it'll live here, though. You're a fun guy. <laughs> fun guy. You fun guy. <laughs> By embracing reason, understanding our emotions, focusing on the present, and pursuing future v- virtue, we can unlock our true potential for happiness. 
I think it's, that says it right there. Do you know what's been making me really happy? What? Watching weather systems roll through. <laughs> That's happening here. Yeah. But Pretty it's cool. so cool. I like how it cools everything down here in the desert. You know why it's be- I find it better than TV? Because I can't feel the TV, right? Dude, there's been so much bullshit on TV. It's like lower vibration to me now. Gross. I can't, like, I'm having a hard time getting into, I don't, I don't know why, because I know it's art and I understand it, but there's just like some of the- There's mo- a lot of shitty art, dude. Some of the movies and some of the stuff that's out there is not redeemable. It's not, there's no redemption story to no it. No good like quality in the sense to of, it, redeeming quality. Yeah, like even even like a Game of Thrones or, or some of these like great, you can see the ego and the, there, there, there's a spiritual aspect, there's the hero's journey, all those things. Some of the stuff that's put out there is so homogenized and it's cheap, missing it's all cheap that vanilla ice cream. It's cheap. It's like super sugary frosted flakes. Yeah, that's gross. I, went I to tried the, some Frosted Flakes the other day. Yeah. I hadn't had them in a long time. Gross, bro. I used yeah. to love Frosted Flakes. Yeah. They were so much. They weren't even that sugary. They were mostly salt. And Ew. it tasted like thin pieces of cardboard. Ew. I was like, well, my taste buds have changed. This, this, this is ruined. Great. Yeah. I went to La La Carilla. Oh, yeah. That's Dude, it. I got some hand-churned ice cream. No. Oh. It was it was uh, matcha best. mint ice cream, hand tur- hand churned. That's the fucking best. It was so good. I fist pounded with the guy in the back of the counter. I'm like this is fucking <laughs> awesome. He said that he looks at me. He said that's my birthday flavor. I don't even know what that means, but yeah. I said it's really good. Yeah, this is my birthday suit. But uh, let me finish my. Let me. <laughs> this is the flavor of me. I knew something looked funny about the way you were scooping that ice cream. Yeah, fist bump. <laughs> Come back here, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the walk-in. <laughs> That was happening. <laughs> All right, hold on a second. So my point is. I changed that story. Here's, here's my point about watching weather patterns and why I don't really care for the TV and why weather's been make, bringing me a lot of joy. I get to watch it like a movie. Mm-hmm. I get to observe nature doing its thing, but I also get to feel it at the same time. Yes. When's the last time you get to watch a movie and feel it? I know people are like, well, you can feel the emotions. That's not what I'm saying. Can you feel the environment of the film? No. Or, or when it first starts to rain kind of lightly. Oh, the best. Here in the desert, it's amazing. And I put all these wood chips down out back, and they're all crushed up juniper. So oh, when the rain hits it, it dude, it, it is amazing. fucking nuts. You got to take a cigar and go out there and watch it. I have, You know I have so many cigars. <laughs> you need to just take one out there and yeah. watch the weather. Yeah. I'll set out for two hours. I read, though. Mm-hmm. I use it as my time to read. I like and that. I'll smoke a cigar and get cancer. And what, what are you reading right now? Uh, Rene Descartes. Oh, yeah, Descartes. That's what I'm reading. Uh, I'm, his I'm, philosophy. He was kind of like... He was he was cool. I like his stuff. The only thing with him, I won't go too much into this. The only thing with him was he was afraid of the Catholic Church. What a pussy. Yeah, he was kind of that. He was kind of like not. You know, some of the guys, well, I mean, they were worried about their life or getting in prison. Because mm-hmm. what's his name? Was it Michelangelo? Somebody got, you know, put in prison for life. I don't know. That was, that was like. I he, probably I mean, know. He, knew, I'm, I'm but then he was he was still kind of mixed into the church. You know, he was raised in it, went yeah. to college. Tradition. Yeah. And then he had, um, which this is funny. So he never would get up early in the morning because he didn't like the cold, right? So he was in like a night owl and he hated people. Like he was in, like me, like super introverted. Yeah. And people would even think about, they'd be like, the, here's the, this is the number one French philosopher right now everybody's eating up he was a mathematician all this stuff oh, yeah. everybody's eating up all his work so i'm dying for it no one can they try to find him and he he would move cities on purpose and not tell anybody so <laughs> no one would find him and then uh so then finally this queen of spain or something wants to be the personal philosopher for him and he didn't want to do it you know right he didn't want to go through all the bullshit because another thing was because that was a thing for um uh, you know, royalty to get philosophy, your own philosophy. Oh, yeah, you'd have to have your own little yeah, teacher. And then they would come and teach you. And stuff. 100%. And th- this was funny like with him. You have an Aristotle show up. This was funny with him. He's like, he's like, I'm, I'm old for a reason. I've lasted this long because I don't get up early in the morning and I don't get flus. I don't get, uh, what was the one that, uh, the one that was really killing people instantly? The lung thing. Oh. That makes your lungs kind of collapse. Bro. Uh, you know what I'm talking Whatever. about. Whatever. People yeah. were yelling it. So fucking he's like, he's like, this is the reason because I don't get up early. And then this queen demanded that he get up early and he got up early. And within, I think it was like six months, he died of influenza. <laughs> oh, from the flu? <laughs> yeah. Cause he yeah, was having to get up early. Cause you know, you probably just, uh, he it's probably was just around a lot of people Yeah, which, it's out of his. It's where out before of his he wasn't. So yeah. You know, Spinoza got shanked. <laughs> oh really? I swear to God. 
<laughs> with a knife? Yeah. Some dude but, shanked like, the shit out of him. Why? He, he didn't die. Nice. But they shanked the shit out. Well, because here's what happens when He's you going ch- against the church. What happens when you challenge stuff like that? People yeah. get crazy. Yeah. yeah. And that just shows you how fucking radical people are. Sort of whack. I read that quote. I mean, if if the hierarchical of the church says. And what was crazy is back in those days, those popes and stuff were hooked up. You weren't you weren't a pope because you were virtuous and righteous and like no. the best person. You were the pope because Stone you're I, I, like you become king and I'm your best friend. You would just make me. You'd be like, "Hey, bro, I want to be pope." And you're like, "Okay, cool, sure." You can be like pope. I could be the most evil guy in the world. Mm-hmm. Probably are. Yeah, yeah. pope back then. Yeah, I don't trust him. Look at the old oh. pictures of the Vatican chopping people's heads off with the guillotine. Oh yeah, it was horrific. If you think I'm lying to you, the pictures are there. Well, it's so funny too. It's like people are like, ah. Uh, and then people go straight to French Revolution, atheists. Uh, Descartes was talking about this. He's like, people are swinging way over, and they're swinging way too far. And then next thing you know, they're bringing the guillotines out. Yeah, correct. Like back, back like atheists started bringing guillotines out too. Wait till, you, wait till you find the woke crowd bringing out machine guns. There's a justification. Yeah, they're like, oh, I can, like, I let's can kill everybody that doesn't. It doesn't work. You don't it's, think it's, like me. It's turtles all the way up and turtles all the way down. Oh man, turtle, turtle, turtle. And turtle. you can't with, with a. You know this with the cults is you can never be good enough. Never. The whole point is for you the to never be good enough. Thing is that it's, it's just an occult. You're not good enough. Oh, these. Cults. You can never virtue signal enough. No. They turn on each other constantly. There's all always the time. something about you that's just keeps you fucking down. Yeah, it's it's it's. Uh, Even, so you did everything right. It's, it's modern. It's modernism. Like what are those instance. boxes? The, the fucking things, and you sit with the priest, and then you have to like confess your sins. Oh, you go in the little box, and then first Father of, Fry's in. Yeah. First of all, why isn't the dude looking me in the eye? Right. Second of all, why am I in a box? Right. Why am I in a goddamn box? Right. Whispering shit that I did <laughs> wrong in my consciousness <laughs> to this dude. Now, say I solved all those things, right. and I go back in the box. What do I tell the priest? What's he going to have me do? Here's the thing about this. He said, you've done nothing wrong, my son, but you must pray. So Protestants are like, well, fuck the priest. What you need to do is go strictly to God. Now, here's the funny part about this. And then God will forgive you. How about if you did something supposedly wrong? It's not really wrong because it's a learning lesson. Mm -hmm. And then you had self-realization. You went through to yourself, to to your personal self. You started thinking and you're like, hmm, I fucked over this person. I didn't do that. This this went way wrong in this. So next time, and then you take a piece of paper and pencil <laughs> and you write down what happened. You write down like next time. Here's what you're gonna do, and here's how you're gonna do it better. And here's what you learn from it. And maybe you write make an affirmation or you meditate on it or whatever. That's way too reasonable. That's Stop all that. you got to do. <laughs> That's all you have to do. <laughs> That's all you have to do. You didn't sin. You had a learning lesson. Oh, my God. Sin, the sinning part would be not learning from it. Become and, a lover with but the But it's nature. easy. But that's why people sin so much, yeah. so-called sin, because all you do is be like, hey, hey, Father, will you forgive me? Yeah. Oh, wait, I mean, 10, 10 Hail Marys? Okay. Hail Mary full of grace. Could you imagine the dude? He walks in. He's like, dude, I. he goes into the box with the priest. He's like, I just shanked this shit. <laughs> Spinoza. Spinoza. Yeah. And you know the priest? The priest turns over. He says, "You know, he says, nice hey, fucking work." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, you tell him to pray. Nailed it, bro. No, he'd be like, "You killed a heretic." <laughs> Nailed gonna, it. We're gonna promote you. Yeah. <laughs> Where would you like to be? You, yeah, you exactly. name the title. We'll give it to you. Thank you very much, everybody. All right. Um, you can get no, lunch. We'll get lunch. Yes, we need lunch. Thank you, everybody, for joining us on Higher Density Living. We will see you again soon.